And as we continue to talk about a number of issues affecting our community here in southeastern Michigan, really throughout the state of Michigan, not just COVID-19, but other major issues as well, including what we talked about uh, in the first segment with our last story regarding some attendance issues and participation issues with the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission and how that affects many of our communities, including our, our Asian American communities. And we're pleased to be joined by Laura Masumi. She is the executive director of Rising Voices once again with us today. Laura, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate having you on. Let's start with the census issue because uh, according to our U.S. Census data, the 2020 data that's come in, the Michigan's Asian population has risen by 40 percent. Native, uh, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander population has risen by 17 percent. So according to our state's data, our Asian American populations are on the rise and, and, and really across the board we've seen a number of, di of diverse populations in the state of Michigan be on the rise according to this data. Um, do you believe that with this particular census there's any particular reason why that representation would have grown or is it just a significant number of people that are, gr that are coming into the state and maybe believe that Michigan is a more welcoming place to live than other places in the country? Actually, I think that what this data shows is kind of it, it's proof positive for what we have seen and what we've known that, you know, our Asian American population in the state of Michigan has been growing with one of the fastest growing racial groups in the state and in the country, honestly. And I think a lot of that is because of the extended and long term presence of Asian American communities here in Michigan. I think that that is something that we at Rising Voices feel like it's very important to highlight. A lot of folks are maybe new immigrants, but they may be, you know, coming from different parts of the country and they're coming here because they know that there are communities that are here for them and that there are resources, there are amenities that speak to them and their cultures and their communities. And I think that being able to acknowledge, recognize, celebrate um, the Asian American communities that have been in Michigan for a really long time is incredibly important and also speaks to the importance of having reflective representation that is accountable and responsive to our communities. And, let, and let's continue on with the representation note because it's not just people that are coming in from these communities from different places across the world or other situations such as families that have been here or others that are joining their families in our communities here in Michigan from around the world and then are eventually down the line gaining citizenship or are citizens and regardless of the situation whether they are voting citizens or are here on a visa for work or are here with family whatever the case may be their representation in our government and in our communities is vitally important especially as populations of Asian American communities continue to grow and more and even more importantly, because of what we have experienced here in the United States, just more in, in a more inflated and present manner, at least in our mainstream media and our and presence of mind in the last several months, but really issues that have been ongoing for a number of years, but have just more recently been, been brought to the forefront, uh, albeit for horrible reasons and, and hor under horrible aspects. Yeah, certainly, and I think that, you know, for us, specifically here in Michigan and in, in the Midwest at large, but specifically here in Michigan, we know that oftentimes the racial narrative of the dynamics here in Michigan are primarily white and black and sometimes also Latinx and indigenous. But for us, we want to make sure that Asian Americans are part of that picture and that we are encouraging newcomers Asian Americans that are coming from different parts of the country or Asians coming from different parts of the world are coming to a Michigan understanding the context of how the built environment got to be the way that it is and how the current the current climate that we're living in the one way that we that we believe is necessary to be able to fight back against uh, anti-Asian hate or stereotypes or this perception that we're the perpetual foreigners is through solidarity with other communities of color, specifically BIPOC communities, Black, Indigenous, and Latinx communities here in Michigan, and that we understand you know, that representation, it's not just about having a face that looks like mine, it's also about having representation of folks that represent my values, that understand where I'm coming from, and that are going to be, you know, making policy decisions using that full context and kind of understanding what it means to be a, po a person of color writ large and not just not just an Asian American. We're joined by Laura Masumi. She is the executive director of Rising Voices with us today on the Megacast. And it, it becomes even more concerning when we look at the situations where we've had these horrible hate crimes that have been committed uh, against 
people in the Asian American community, certainly the attacks that happened earlier on this year are those on the forefront, but really this, it, it becomes reflective of other situations on other, com on other communities in the past, particularly I think about coming up, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, and I think about the attacks that came on uh, com communi uh, uh, communities that practice Islam, uh, Muslim communities, mm -hmm. uh, on Arab American communities that had, that had to experience that, uh, well they shouldn't, they didn't have to experience it, they did experience that in the wake of 9-11 and are still experience that, experiencing that today. Heck, I just read uh, a, a really unfortunate article recently about a student that was bullied on the playground at school because he was wearing a, because uh, she was wearing a, hi a hijab and was called mm -hmm. a terrorist by a fellow student, a fellow student, which is absolutely horrible, and that makes this situation even more important as we go into redistricting and as we're considering different means of con of constructing our voting districts to make sure that we are getting that input and we are encouraging that representation, so that we can address these issues from people that are affected by these issues, mm -hmm. not just people that are listening or making talking points and and promising to address the issue yeah i think that's absolutely right and i think for us you know rising voices we're a pan-asian american organization a huge part of our base are south asian muslims and we work with the arab american community here as well and that is that's been a, a kind of a formative moment for the Muslim American community in this country. And as a Japanese American myself, I remember the importance of Japanese American and Muslim American solidarity uh, post 9-11. And that is something that really drives, that's the value that really drives our work today. And I think that again is an incredibly important point when it comes to things like redistricting, when it comes to having reflective democracy and representation that's accountable to our communities. First and foremost, the commission needs to know that our communities are here, that we exist, that we've been in, and in Michigan, we've been critical parts of our communities across the state, in Oakland County, et cetera, uh, for many decades now. And also that it, it's really important too for a lot of our representation that we currently have in the state legislature to understand that you you do have Asian American constituents and that those Asian American constituents have long noted that bullying uh, based on race, based on based on religion, and and especially in the past year, is a huge concern for parents. Uh, and making sure that our school environments are inclusive and equitable, and are teaching uh, a fully inclusive and culturally appropriate ed ed curriculum is something that's really important for us as well. We're joined by Laura Masumi. She is the executive director of Rising Voices with us on the MegaCast. And there's been so much more of an emphasis, or at least slightly more of an emphasis, that just seems inflated because it's been so un there's been such underrepresentation in since the dawn of uh, of Hollywood and since the dawn of uh, major mainstream entertainment there seems to be more of an effort more recently to include more representation of diverse communities across television across movies uh, certainly in in the news as well to provide a different look at these com communities a more truthful look at, at communities of, of color, of uh, BIPOC communities, certainly, so that we have that representation. We're getting more than just those typical stereotypes that we've seen played out time and time again in movies and in television and uh, in the way that news stories are reported. And that becomes impactful, too, on these communities, especially when they're experiencing an increased wave of hate crimes and of hateful speech in, a, in, in school, kids, and their bullying. Um, a new study is, shows that over half of Asian film roles serve as a punchline where they are laughing at the Asian character and not with them. How much of a difference does it make when we have, for, for those that are in these communities, that are in Asian American communities, that are in BIPOC communities, how much of a difference does it make for them specifically to be able to see representation of their communities in film, in television, in the news that is more along the lines of what their actual experiences are? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it makes a huge, it has a huge impact. I think for us, that is a reflection of power dynamics in this country. Who gets to, uh, who gets to write the scripts? Who gets to greenlight projects? Who gets to be at the helm uh, in making those stories? And how important it is to make sure that we're elevating and being inclusive in terms of who gets to tell our own stories, rather than having folks from outside of our communities and cultures be the ones that are painting the picture of who we are and what we look like. Um, I think it's incredibly important for for our communities to be able to see themselves well represented. I think that uh, 
one thing that we often say is culture eats strategy for breakfast and we can we can organize and talk to as many people as possible but oftentimes what we can imagine as a possibility for us for us to be able to achieve is often set by culture it's by the things that we see on tv that we read online etc and being able to make sure that we're part of that picture is incredibly important um, our communications director jasmine rivera is the filmmaker and is also helming a project for us called diy power which will be a short film series that we really want to put asian americans front and center as change makers in our own lives and in our own communities. And we think that that's incredibly important. We see all the diversity of the different stories that get told about white folks, honestly, but then like increasingly over time for other communities as well. Um, we're not defined solely by our racial or ethnic experience. We too experience love and loss and hardship. And I think being able to expand the imagination of what's possible for Asian Americans who want to go into film, who want to go into the visual arts and may not see themselves represented, and also for their parents and families who might not see that as a viable career option, all of that is set by what we see. Uh, and, and how viable it feels uh, is very much set by the culture. So being able to include more Asian American, more diverse voices in that story is incredibly important. Yeah, it's important in drawing that inspiration and that hope from, from people that are in the, these communities, but also in, em, in drawing empathy and sympathy from those that are not in those communities. Because the more you see people that are different from you, uh, represented all across the board in your life, the, the better understanding you can have of their experiences, of your shared experiences, and expand your worldview, expand your view of different walks of life, and hopefully that ends up in a situation where it inspires more love and respect among different po differing populations, and maybe stomps down on some of this hate that we've seen really on the rise over the past several years, or at least more visible to us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that for us, we believe that there's so many different avenues that that needs to take place, right? So obviously, it's about building interpersonal relationships within your own community with your neighbors. It's about being able to expand the visibility of Asian Americans across a whole range of visual media. But it's also about making sure that curriculum is inclusive and that we are ensuring that the full history of the United States, which includes Asian Americans <laughs> for, for many centuries, you know, is, is part of that curriculum. And so too about other communities of color. The story that's so often gets told really centers a certain type of American and a certain type of American experience. But we are all made all the richer by having a diversity of that experience and, and a number of different stories that we can relate to. Because I think a lot of what our American experience is, though it includes hardship, that is how we build solidarity. That's how we build that, that those bonds of mutual respect across lines of difference. We're joined by Laura Masumi. She is the executive director of Rising Voices with us today on the Megacast. And Laura, we appreciate your time. We have a couple more minutes with you today before we'll say goodbye. Before we do, are there any more important issues at this time that we should, that our communities need to make themselves more aware of or should be informed of that affect our Asian American communities and our BIPOC communities so that we can continue these important dialogues? And not only that, but continue to be more introspective and consider our own individual roles in the paradigms that we're in right now and the ways we need to change our society in order to be more inclusive and be more friendly and be more respectful. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think there's many things on the interpersonal as well as the structural levels. I think we talked about the census and just the rise of Asian Americans here in the state of Michigan, the importance of Asian Americans to participate in the redistricting process by submitting comment, by creating maps that show our communities of interest, where we live and what we do, because that is so tied up in how our districts are drawn, who represents us. Voters should be electing their leaders and leaders shouldn't get to define, you know, what who's their constituency. We're are here we need to be more visible you know rising voices engages in a number of different efforts to make sure that we're both going on the civic engagement front as well as the cultural and organizing front because that narrative is incredibly important we know school board elections are up next year as well it's really important too that we consider running for office that we are encouraging folks that we know would be great candidates to also run and and support inclusive curriculum that reflects at all the students that are attending these schools well, Laura, we appreciate your time. Uh, if people want to get more involved with Rising Voices or learn, learn more information, how can they get in contact with you? 
definitely find us on Facebook and, and Instagram right now. Um, our website is undergoing construction, so <laughs> but find us on uh, Facebook at Rising Voices AAS. Um, and we are always looking for volunteers. We'd love to hear from folks, so please feel free to comment, send us a message. Laura, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Take care.